The Indian Independence Act was a moment of monumental importance in Indian history. This was the act which partitioned British India into two dominions, India and Pakistan. The act was first introduced in the British House of Commons on 4th July 1947 as the Indian Independence Bill by the Labour government of Clement Attlee. The bill received royal assent on 18th July 1947, thereby becoming an act. Basically, the Indian Independence Act put into action a plan which was proposed by Lord Mountbatten, the then Viceroy of India. This was the Mountbatten Plan, alternatively known as the 3rd June Plan. The Mountbatten Plan contained principles which included the dominion status for India and Pakistan, setting up of their constituent assemblies, and principles of partition. It was decided that India's independence had to be granted by 30th June 1948. This meant that the transfer of power by the setting up of an independent Indian government had to be completed by this day. Thus, the Mountbatten Plan truly set up the foundations of the Indian Independence Act. We all know that India became an independent nation on 15th August 1947. But have you ever wondered why this particular day, 15th of August, was chosen as the Day of Independence? Well, the answer is simple. It was the second anniversary of Japan's surrender in the Second World War. 15th August 1947 was celebrated as the second anniversary of the Allied victory over Japan. It signified the end of the bloodiest and the most devastating conflict that the world had ever witnessed. Therefore, this was a symbolic day for Lord Mountbatten and Britain as a whole. Leave it to the British to make India's Independence Day all about themselves. However, the fact remains that this historic date was brought about due to the enacting of the Indian Independence Act. So let's take a look at the features of this act. While doing so, keep in mind that the Indian Independence Act was essentially the ratification of the Mountbatten Plan. The Indian Independence Act came into effect from 15th August 1947. The Indian Independence Act was to set up two independent dominions to be known as India and Pakistan from 15th August 1947. The princely states were to be given an option to join either India or Pakistan. Agreement between the new dominions and the princely states were to be negotiated. A boundary commission headed by Sir Cyril Radcliffe was to be set up in order to officially determine the boundaries of the two new dominions. The provinces of Punjab and Bengal were to be divided between the two new dominions along religious lines. This meant that these provinces, constituted under the Government of India Act of 1935, would cease to exist. By this act, Punjab would be divided into West Punjab and East Punjab, and Bengal would be divided into West Bengal and East Bengal. It was further decided that the territories of Pakistan would include the provinces of East Bengal, which included the Silhet district of Assam, West Punjab, the Northwest Frontier Province, Sindh, and the Chief Commissioner's Province of British Balochistan. The rest of the provinces in its entirety would be a part of the dominion of India. The two new dominions could form their own constituent assemblies and were free to adopt their own constitutions. This act rang the death knell for the British Empire in India. 
British suzerainty and ascendancy over the Indian subcontinent was to come to an end. The words Emperor of India and Indian Imperator were to be omitted from the royal style, which was a fashion by which monarchs and noblemen were addressed. From the appointed day of 15th August, the United Kingdom would bear no responsibility for the government of any of the territories of the erstwhile British India. The suzerainty of the British monarchy over the princely states as well as the tribal areas was also set to end on 15th August 1947. In accordance with this curtailing of responsibilities, the office of the Secretary of State for India was abolished. His work was handed over to the Secretary of the Commonwealth Affairs. Under this act, provisions were also made for the governance of the new dominions. Let's take a deeper look at them. The powers of the legislature of each of the dominions were handed over to their already existing constituent assemblies. These assemblies would remain in power and act as the dominion legislatures until the adoption of the new constitutions. The two dominions were to be governed in accordance with the provisions set by the Government of India Act of 1935. Other provisions could also be implemented as long as they were made in accordance with the laws made by the constituent assemblies of the dominions. Lord Mountbatten, the last Viceroy of India, was asked by the Indian leadership to become the Governor General of India. Muhammad Ali Jinnah became the Governor General of Pakistan. The Governor General was to be given extensive powers so as to bring the Indian Independence Act into force. The Governor General was responsible for the division of territories, powers, rights and assets between the two dominions. In order to do so, he could adopt or amend the Government of India Act of 1935 in any way he deemed necessary. The Governor-General, by the power vested in him by the Crown, could also give assent to any law. A special clause was also included in the Act which made provisions for the Indian Armed Forces. There were to be stipulations which would make the Governor-General responsible for the division of the Indian Armed Forces of His Majesty between the two dominions. He also had the power to command and govern those forces until the total division between the two dominions were complete. These transitional powers were to extend till 31st March 1948 or any such date as may be determined by the legislature of the Indian Dominion. In accordance with this law, Lord Mountbatten left his position on 21st June 1948 and it was taken up by Chakravarti Rajgopalachari who became the last ever Governor General of India. Let's take a look at the particularities of the legislation in a little more detail. The constituent assemblies would continue with its primary function of creating new constitutions as well as to serve as the principal legislative bodies of India and Pakistan. The legislature of each of the dominions were given free reign in making laws for their dominion, including laws on foreign policy. No law passed in the United Kingdom would be extended to the new dominions, nor would the laws created in the new dominions affect the United Kingdom in any way. This extensive legislative process required the service of numerous civil servants. So there was also a section in this act which provided for the continuation of the services provided by the civil servants. This included people employed by the British Crown on or before 15th August 1947 who were to carry on their services 
to either of the two new dominions while receiving full benefits that they were entitled to. The Indian Independence Act was an event of great historical significance. It created the independent, sovereign nations of India and Pakistan as we know them today. It was considered as a great event in Britain as well. Clement Attlee proclaimed that this act was the fulfillment of the British mission in India. Lord Samuel in the House of the Lords described the Indian Independence Act as a treaty of peace without war. The Indian leadership proclaimed this act as a victory as well. This was for them the culmination of an independent struggle which had spanned for over a century. However, for some, the decisions taken in this act left much to be desired. Maulana Abul Kalam Azad observed that though 14th August was a day of rejoicing for the Muslims of the newly formed Pakistan, it was a day of mourning for the Hindus and Sikhs of India on account of their country having been ripped apart. Also, the question of the accession of several princely states was fiercely contested by India and Pakistan, giving rise to regional tensions, some of which are still present to this day. Despite this, it has to be said that the Indian Independence Act turned the page on the British Raj and heralded the dawn of a new independent India.